Hello and welcome to this uh, virtual presentation titled Design and Simulation of a Machine Learning and Model Predictive Control Approach to Autonomous Race Driving for the F110 Platform. Uh, thank you for joining in. My name is Alexandru Tatulia-Quadran and I'll be uh, presenting the work done together with Tommaso Mariani and Professor Sebastian Engel um, at the Process Dynamics and Operation Group in Theo Dortmund. Most of our research in, in the group is related to chemical engineering and chemical plants, but we have found the F110 challenge to be a very interesting and very didactic example for, for control and for optimal control as well. Uh, we have found a community that's very vibrant and full of passionate researchers keen to share their, their insight into competitive race driving and autonomous race driving in general and they have shared a lot of information uh, with respect to uh, programming all the way to mathematical modeling and control so so that's a very positive aspect when it comes to optimal control one can indeed draw some parallels between the optimal control of a chemical plant and the optimal race driving in optimal control one can think of a layered approach or a direct optimizing approach. In the layer approach, we would have an upper layer which deals with the uh, economics of the plant and the lower layer of controllers that actually enforces these decision policies onto the process. In a direct optimizing control, the economics controller directly controls the degrees of freedom of the process. And this is what we are aiming for in this, in this application. If we were to translate this to driving, then we might think of the, the upper layers as the driving strategy and the path planning, which provide set points for steering controllers and speed controllers, which can actually steer the vehicle. The information about the environment is uh, parsed by a SLAM algorithm, simultaneous localization and the mapping algorithm, which feeds back information about the car's position and about the, uh, the track, about the environment. Like I said, in this work, we will be focusing on the approach on the right. And also, we are looking at using the, uh, the results of the optimal driving in order to train a artificial neural network controller so that this controller can eventually substitute the NMPC controller on the, on the platform. This was the motivation for the talk. And now let's move on to the, uh, to the F110 platform. We have a solid base to start from. Uh, our colleagues uh, at the faculty of ET and ET in Dortmund have done a lot of work with the real uh, AVs, as you can see here in the image. And uh, they have uh, provided us SLAM algorithms, which can deliver information about the track meaning the, uh, the boundaries of the track and the, uh, the trajectory, as you can see here in green, uh, in the middle of the track. And this is one assumption that we make, is that uh, the SLAM algorithm can always deliver the current uh, position of the car and accurate information about the track. And we can use that to start developing our NMPC uh, and ANN algorithms. Uh, and indeed, the focus of this work lies in developing the, uh, the control algorithms and testing these in the Ross gazebo simulation environment, which is a very accurate and reliable uh, simulation environment for robotics. The model of the car for this work is based on the bicycle model. You see here the equations of the model and the states. There are six states, the position of the vehicle, the orientation, the linear velocities on X and Y axis and the angular velocity. And there are two control inputs. These are the duty cycle of the electrical motor and the steering angle of the front wheels. It is not always necessary to implement such a complex tire model, but for this work, we have selected to implement the Pacheca tire model, the coefficients of which we have fitted to our uh, simulation environment. Once again, on this slide, you can see a summary of all the equations and the model parameters, 
as well as the sources for the model parameters and the tire model. Let's move on to uh, a discussion of the optimal driving, which is our main focus here. Before we uh, dive deeper, we have to understand that the information as it is provided by the SLAM algorithm cannot be directly used by the NFPC algorithm and the ANN as such. So it requires some additional pre-computations. You see a situation on the top image where the car is at the red position and it's, uh, it's facing that way. You see also the points provided by the SLAM algorithm for the left and right boundaries, as well as the points on the center line of the track. In this work, we are always transforming all of these points so that the car is always at the center of the uh, coordinate system and its orientation is always uh, along the x-axis. This transformation that we perform on all the points in the image greatly simplifies the work, not only for the NMPC algorithm, but also for the ANN algorithm. For that, uh, we have to transform, like I said, all these points, and also compute a target point for the optimization, which is always gonna be the farthest away point that the SLAM algorithm can see on this uh, central line. We will get to that also in a later slide. Once again, we have here the coordinate transformation uh, given by the two equations on the top and a general form for the optimal control problem, the NLP that we are solving at each iteration. It's important now to understand how we implement the cost function for this problem and the constraints, more specifically, the track constraints, the left and right track boundaries. For the track boundaries, in this case, we have opted to approximate these with continuous functions, in this case with a third order polynomial, which is interpolated between the points on the left and right boundaries. You can see that these polynomials are given in the, in the two forms, like here, and their coefficients are computed before every NMPC iteration. So every time we have to recompute and re-approximate uh, our boundaries. As far as the driving goals, we can either have optimal driving or trajectory tracking, or why not a combination of uh, obstacle avoidance, for example, a static obstacle on the track or a competing car. These cost functions can be combined with each other. In this uh, slide, you see the result of the implementation of the NMPC problem as such. You can see how the optimizer predicts the future path of the car, and it is always following the red dot, which is the target point, which is always moving up ahead of the car, and as such is never really attainable. This is what ensures that we can progress along the track. We also see how the approximation of the, the boundaries is changing, and how our car is able to navigate the turns. Now let's talk a little bit more about uh, implementing the driving as a machine learning problem. And for that, we have to understand that the ANN controller has to learn from the NMPC controller by, by learning a mapping between the inputs and the outputs. In this case, because we are always using a standard transformation of, the, of all the points, it is sufficient to provide the velocities and the left and right track boundary points to the ANN controller. The outputs are, of course, going to be the steering angle and the duty cycle. The ANN controller then has to learn this nonlinear map. And to have an example of uh, what this uh, mapping might look like, we have two situations depicted on the right. We have, first of all, all the points where the NMPC controller decided to steer the car with an angle delta of 0 0.25 to 0 0.3 radians. And you can see that this clearly forms a left turn. This is one of the patterns that the ANN can very easily learn. On the right, you have a similar situation, but this time for a right turn. In our case, we have found that 
it is sufficient to have an artificial neural network with three layers and 100 nodes for each layer, a feed-forward fully connected neural network. And the training of this network is rather easy. We have taken 2,000 situations, so LMPC uh, iterations on different tracks that I will present later. We have used the mean square error as a loss function, and we have optimized the parameters of this network with the Adams optimizer. The training is also very fast. It takes around 70 seconds to train this network in 5,000 epochs. Let's have a look at some, uh, some results. First of all, let's look at driving with the NMPC controller. Let's look at optimal driving, fast driving, if you will, versus trajectory tracking. You see the cost functions implemented for the two cases here on the left. And on the right, you have the two comparisons. It is no surprise that the optimal driving is faster. And you can see that the blue star is always farther ahead on the track than the green star. And both simulations are always ran for the same amount of time, in this case, 20 seconds. Uh, that comes as no surprise because the trajectory tracking tries, in this case, to stay as close as possible to the center line of the track. On the right, you see that if we impose further constraints, for example, on the inputs, if we uh, restrict the, uh, the range of, uh, of steering, and if we restrict the, uh, the maximum velocity of the car, we can achieve a much safer uh, driving behavior, something that could be used, for example, in uh, gathering data and exploring the track in order to train the neural network. Training and testing was done uh, mainly on these two tracks, number one and two, and then the, the test track number three. You can see that we achieve relatively good uh, accuracies for the duty cycle and delta on these tracks. And you can see once again, the two controllers side by side on track number two. You can see that they perform fairly similarly. Of course, it is, uh, quite complicated to compare them uh, as such, because since the ANN controller doesn't take the exact same path as the NNPC controller, the, the optimal outputs will also not be identical. But nonetheless, you can see that the trajectories overall are very similar, and so the ANN controller performs uh, rather well on this track. The final test uh, is done on the scaled-down version of the Nürburgring track where we wanted to see if this uh, ANN controller trained on only simple tracks can also perform well on a much longer and more difficult track. And for that, you see here that it indeed performs well and it can steer the car along this, uh, this more challenging track. The last result that I want to show you is uh, obtained from Gazebo. In the simulator, you can see the ANN controller performing uh, a couple of laps on the Porto track. This is a track that was used in the F110 competition a few years back. Uh, and you can see that the ANN controller can navigate it uh, without problems. You see how the, the SLAM algorithm provides the information to the, to the controller, and you can see the trajectories that the controller takes. With that, we come to the end of this uh, presentation. In conclusion, uh, I've shown you a method of designing NMPC uh, control for the F110 model based on the simple bicycle model of the car. The results obtained here were implemented in Python based on the DoMPC platform, which is a platform from optimal control that is uh, open source and freely available. We've also shown a method of dealing with the constraints of the track and posing the optimal control problem uh, in a pragmatic yet effective way. And we have seen how this can lead to uh, a simple way of training an ANN controller which performs well on test tracks, but also on complex tracks. The uh, potential for development is, uh, is quite high. And we are uh, looking forward to, uh, to future work related to the implementation of the ANN and the NMPC controllers on the F110 platform, as well as expanding our example base of DoMPC 
with, uh, with the F-110 model and controller in the future. Thank you very much for your attention. I look forward to your questions.